Welcome to Christ Center Gamer's unboxing of the latest joystick from Turtle Beach. I am really excited about this. As soon as I found out this existed, I begged and pleaded and hoped that I and prayed that I could get to review this product, and I'm so excited to be able to do so. This is the Velocity One Flight Stick from Turtle Beach, their newest foray into flight sticks. Now, the first one was their Flight Yoke, the Velocity One uh, Flight Yoke, which was huge. The thing was just gigantic and very expensive and very nice. But this, but it did not really serve the space combat or simulator genre well, where this one tries to do that. It's got a trigger. The other one didn't have any means of firing. Uh, this one is an actual joystick, which is appropriate to, to many types of simulators and, and space combat and things like that. And this thing is loaded to the gills with features. Um, it's got a Bluetooth app. It's got an ambidextrous design, which is great. Um, it's got flight management display, uh, multi-mode trim wheel. It's got crazy amount of axes. Uh, here you go on the back. Get a good close look at that. Talks about all these different micro switches. It's got touch pads and all kinds of stuff. And it's Xbox One and Windows compatible. So I am really excited to give this thing a whirl. So let's get this thing open. I don't want to wait any longer. I've been staring at this thing for months. Curious about it since I first posted that first press release. <laughs> I've been excited about this product. So I've never seen anything with so many features. And the price is, I believe, $129, which I wouldn't say is low, but considering all its features, it's very, very competitive. Um, its most popular competitor is probably this guy right here, uh, the T16000 from Thrustmaster. It used to be around 70 to 80 bucks. I don't know what it's going for these days, but it doesn't have even anywhere near the feature set. That this is supposed to have so i'm really excited let's get this open and see what it looks like all right so now we've got box in a box we pull this down all right all right i guess we'll show you off the first things first we have got our flight stick overview and i just dropped some pamphlets <laughs> but there's our flight stick overview and our quick flight guide right there okay and Here's what the inside of the pamphlet looks like as well. I believe they have digital versions of all of these. In preparation for this review, I was reading some of the online documents or for this preview. So yeah, here we go. I dropped some warranty info and stuff like that. Let's see what's the warranty on this guy. Is it one year or two? One year, okay. So there it is. All right, more stuff in the box. All right, so for this, I'm going to have to... Oh, I missed, almost missed the Turtle Beach sticker. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these over here out of the side of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and see what I got in the inside. Okay, so this opens kind of funny. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I saw. So it goes like this, and you pull it out like so. It's kind of an interesting approach to that. I'm going to go ahead and put this box on the floor. And we're going to go ahead and separate this and see what the magic is. Okay, so we got one side. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the box. All right. And now we've got box of something, probably cables, and the flight stick. And some yummy treats that you're not supposed to eat. I'm going to put the yummy treats away. Okay. It's a goofy packaging, but it seems to work okay, but it's just funny. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead and take this out of the bag. We've got here. There it is. Okay. And let's see what we got cable-wise before we dive into the stick itself. So we have... Cable, looks like a pretty standard USB-C cable. And what's this in here? Ah, yes. These are the screws. So apparently on the bottom of the stick, 
There are three screw mounts right here, and these screws are for those mounts. So very nice, I love that feature. Um, we'll get into more observations in a second. I just wanna let you know that's what's in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. Here is a nice, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, fabric covered cable. It's got its own built-in vel Velcro, which I always appreciate. Sometimes they say Turtle Beach on it. This one doesn't seem to do that, but it does so show the appropriate icons. So we've got <clears throat> two different icons right there. Goes to your computer or Xbox and goes into the controller. Let's see how long it is. It's a pretty good, pretty good length, which is great considering it's a console controller. So that's six, probably ten-ish feet, give or take. Oh, the Velcro popped off. I'm gonna go grab that. There we go. So apparently it's easy to slide off the end of this. No big deal. But for right now, I think I'm gonna shorten this since our little demonstration here tonight. <clears throat> does not require all this length. Go ahead and slide this down, wrap up some of this cable, because I don't need it all right now. <clears throat> and here we go. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this cable just outside of the frame as well. Okay, so now let's look at the joystick. So, a couple things to note. Uh, first of all, we got a nice big gray trigger. Important, it seems like it's got good feedback. It has this rest that's adjustable and reversible, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it's got grippies on both the top and the bottom. So it should be reversible. This is designed to be ambidextrous. Okay. All right, so that feels pretty good so far, at least in the default position. All right, we've got Turtle Beach logo on one side, all right? We've got on the bottom, like I said, it's got these four grippy pads right here, along with the screw mounts that I mentioned before. It's got, <clears throat> this is where you plug in the cable. And these are two future expansion ports, which is pretty neat. Uh, basically, what they plan is that if there's, you know, future rudder pedals or throttle, like a side throttle, you could plug it into these, which I really hope they release because that'd be really cool. All right, and okay. So then we've got not much on this side or this side, but on the bottom we got a few interesting things. Uh, for one, we've got the Xbox cluster of buttons. So the share button, the Xbox button, the home and menu or back and start, whatever, start and select, whatever it is. They changed the name three times. And then a headphone jack, which is actually pretty unusual for a, for a flight stick to have a headphone jack, which is cool. All right, and then I'm gonna give you a good look at the top here, but first, I guess we'll go with the base. So we have two different throttles, which is awesome. Okay, it's not, okay, so it's got a little click at the top, but it doesn't seem to have a click in the middle. Uh, this one does the same thing. Oh, and there's a full reverse click as well. All right, so these two throttles right here, um, got two of them, which is very unusual. I guess flight sims use it, but it's unusual for a space combat to need both. But you know what? I bet you I'll find a good use for it. Um, and uh, yeah, so there we go, like so. All right. And then we've got this wheel. It's actually, this wheel is not for controls. It's for controlling the menu, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And then we got four buttons on this side and four buttons on this side, which is awesome. Uh, and Oh yeah, this clicks as well. Kind of a left and right click for back and, and, and activate. All right, and then the stick itself, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. We have a LCD screen at the top, which is so cool. So we've got an OLED screen here. We've got a, a digital hat right here, and then an analog stick and a click. This analog stick, is unusual. Not many um, thing uh, flight sticks have that. That's unusual. All right, so it's got this wheel here as well, which is also unusual. A button here, a button here, and this little touchpad right here. It clicks in, and you can also touch it. Uh, my understanding is that it's touch sensitive, and you can treat it like a mouse. I have not tried this yet, but this is really neat. 
Okay, uh, so yeah, there's a pretty good selection of features here, pretty good selection of buttons. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna plug it into my little laptop right here. I have an extra second little laptop right here. Uh, and uh, make sure it's on Windows. Okay, um, if I could type my own password, that'd be amazing. Okay, now, um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and Go ahead and minimize it. It's Windows that I had opened. Get my uh, controller, USB controllers uh, thing up. USB controller, game controllers, there we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. So as I said earlier, first one goes right here into this first slot. The other two are for future use. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the side of my little laptop here. And let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know how well you guys can see that with the light being so bright, but look at all those LEDs. We've got orange and blue. Look at that. So orange on one side, blue on the other. Very nice. So, um, interesting. Doesn't see it yet. Oh, but you know what? This is probably the most interesting thing right here. There's the menu top. See that? Isn't that wild? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can. All right, stick perform. Okay, so here I'm going to read off some of its options. So, okay, I'm going to go back to the beginning. This is crazy. One is input mode. Two is stick performance. Three is audio. Four is trim wheel. Five is rudder lock. Oh, yeah, this twists. I forgot to mention that, didn't I? Oh, that feels good. Oh, I love how this stick feels. This is great. This twist rudder is, is okay. All right, uh, rudder lock, uh, and then pro aim, which is what this touch thing in the center is for. Orientation, touchpad sensitivity for the touchpad. Lighting, oh, I can go do lighting. Let's see, what does lighting do? Lighting color, brightness, screen brightness. So I'm gonna go color. Um, it just changed my color to, to green and oh, it just did pink and oh, I guess it's an orange and all yellow and C5 is all blue, which I'll probably stick with and C6 is white. Actually, I like white as well. There you go. Cool. All right. And then last but not least is Bluetooth for setting up with the phone, which I may get to on this video or I may, may just save that for the review we'll have to see. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is probably change it to PC mode because right now it's on Xbox mode. And it doesn't appear, actually, you know what? Let me try one quick thing. Uh, controller tester, do I have that on here? Do I have controller tester on here? I don't know if I do. I don't see it, so I may, I may just have to uh, wait on that one. I know it's on the Microsoft Store, but it takes time to install. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this mode to PC mode. Uh, how do I do that again? There we go. Input mode, connection status, and setup. So connection status shows Bluetooth not connected, okay. And then setup, not begin pairing. I must've gotten to the wrong thing. Input mode, there we go, PC and Xbox. I'm switching to PC mode now. Oh, look at that, it reboots. All right, it just rebooted. Um, Yeah, Velocity One Flight Stick shows up in direct input. And look at this. Okay, so I know this is going to be hard to see. Um, I don't know. How, okay, let me see. I may have to lower the brightness. Uh, let's see. Brightness down. There we go. All right, you can probably see it now. So these are all the different. So I can't see what what's happening right now. Uh, so I'm going to turn it around, but you can see I want to push some of the buttons and hats and all oh, axes. Look at all this, crazy. Twist, got left and right, uh, forward and backward on the throttle. Look at that, that is so wild. How cool is that? Um, oh yeah, 
Oh, and the trim. I'm not sure how that one works. All right, well, let me turn this around so I can see it better. And um, I'm just gonna give you my observations. So, all right, the stick goes pretty close to the corner, but not perfectly. Slightly round in the edges, but got a good travel. Feels really nice, okay. Oh, the mouse cursor moving with this touchpad is so wild. That is so cool. Wow, it really does work, and it clicks too. Okay, so the trigger is button number, gosh, I can't even see it. 18. All right, so button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then these two are the start and select are way near the bottom. The share button's near the bottom, the X is in there as well. So you probably could have signed this to a game. Pretty cool. All right, 15 and 16 are in the middle. Ah, the hat switches, uh, the point of view hat. Oh, the two, yeah, and the clicking is a button as well. Yeah, number 19. So I'm trying to find some of these buttons because there's so many of them listed here and I'm not sure they're all mapped to something. All right, so the first row of, of eight is all mapped. Um, the second row has a few unmapped, it looks like. Oh, but you know what? The trim mode, um, oh, there's the dial. This trim mode is a dial and it goes up and down oh, and it's super slowly. That is nuts. All right. Yeah, this is wild. So it's got X and Y, Z, and then X rotation would be the two, this joystick right here for X and Y rotation. Z rotation is uh, the first throttle, this one. And then um, slider is the second throttle. And then dial is this trim control, which is very slow adjustment. And I think you can actually change how slow it is uh, in the menu, uh, I believe. Yeah, so let me do uh, stick trim wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose trim wheel. Indicator and response. So indicator is, oh, it shows you what the actual value is on, the, on this little tiny screen right here. This is so wild. All right, let me go to response, analog axis, and digital buttons. All right, so what happens if I change it to digital buttons? Oh, yeah, two of the buttons that are on here that weren't lighting up before now lighting up. Oh, and you can click it. That is awesome. Like a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can click. This is clickable. Oh, that is so wild. All right, I'm going to go back to analog axis, and then it still clicks. This is, this is so cool. I'm sorry, guys. I know I look like a kid in a candy store here, but... This thing is crazy. They really thought of a lot of cool things when they did this. This is really neat. Uh, is it perfect? I don't know yet. It's too early to tell. Uh, let me, uh, I really feel like you kind of need to have your hand on the bottom uh, to, to make sure it doesn't fall over because I could see it easily tipping, right? Um, front, forward, and backwards. But if your hand's on it, it probably won't be a problem. But it feels real smooth. Um, the buttons are, are seem nice so far. Um, you know, this, this dials and all these controls look really nice so far. The multiple sliders, all the buttons on the front. Like I said, there's, there seems to be five buttons. I haven't figured out how to trigger. Maybe it's four buttons. I haven't figured out how to trigger. And uh, maybe I'll figure it out at some point. Maybe I gotta change the touchpad mode to trigger them or something like that. But yeah, this is this is really neat. Um, I really like this quite a bit. And uh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, pro aim orientation for left versus right hand. I'm a right hander, so no problem there. Uh, pro aim, set button and set level. Set Oh, you can turn on or off the button. You can choose which button does your pro aim, activates it. So that's kind of cool. Um, and it's nice that the buttons are labeled. Oh, wait a minute. I just think I realized something. Oh, that's so awesome. This is so useful. Okay, I just realized something extremely cool. When these throttles go all the way back or all the way forward, it activates a button. In the, in the tester. You know what that means, right? That means you can set it 
to do a boost or uh, like a thruster or or um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a hyper like a hyper boost, right? If you slide it all the way forward, you could be fast and then push it again, and then it turns on the afterburners. Or if you go slow and then push it again, and it you know it either does some other activity. This is so cool, man. They thought of everything. That is wild. So now I figured out what the last four buttons are for. Yeah, I, I really like this. This has got some real potential. And I think it's a real step up from existing controllers that I've seen. I mean, it's got a screen, it's got customizable functionality and which button does what. And, and these are all labeled. So that I, I like that. You know, a lot of times, with, especially with direct input, you don't know what button does what. You know, like which button is it talking about, right? Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then 9, 10, and 11, 12 are the two on the front, on the, on the sliders or, or the, the, the axes here. And then um, it, it got little arrows pointing to many of them. So I don't know what the, oh, the trigger is B18. It says it right on it. These four on the bottom are not labeled. Uh, it's got H2 isn't labeled either. Um, uh, so let me get back out of here. Uh, but then it's got, um, you know, the H2 or the H2 is a click. It's B19, which is correct. Uh, B16 and 17 are labeled and, and they are right here. Uh, pro the, this one doesn't. The only one that's not labeled is the clicking of the um, the wheel, and that one is. Let me see. That is 15. But yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I think. I certainly hope so. Anyway, um, I hope to figure out at least one flight sim to play it with. Uh, it's supposed to support uh, Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous, and I might try it with one or both of those. Uh, I hope to spend some time with it, see if I can figure out how to get it to work with MechWarrior 5. Uh, that one is, is one that uh, I hope to, to give a shot as well. So um, I think that wraps this up. I guess one last thing I'd like to point out is the evolution of flight sticks that I'm going to be coming, perspective I'm coming from. So my very first one was actually a Gravis, and I do technically have it, but using it with modern computers is difficult because it was in the DOS era where it would plug into your keyboard port, PS. AT or PS2, I forget which. I think it's both. And it would simulate keyboard button presses. Really cool, but it didn't have hall sensors like this does for the stick, and it would drift. Uh, not to mention not being USB made it complicated. Uh, then I evolved to this guy, which is still one of the best joysticks ever made, but it's fairly simple. This is the Microsoft Force Feedback 2. On arguably the best Force Feedback joystick ever made. And why? Because a, it was one of the earliest ones to have, in this case, optical uh, sensors, so it would never drift. Also, force feedback is absolutely incredible. But unfortunately, this one is showing its age. These buttons don't really work very well anymore. And while these all work, the trigger sometimes sticks. I, I may take it apart someday and, and try to revive it, because I do love it, and the force feedback is amazing, but so few modern games support force feedback anymore. It's a real shame. But it was, it was truly a great, great flight stick or fighting stick, or combat stick, or however you want to call it. And then, as I hinted at before, Thrustmaster is T16000M. Uh, it does have a hall-based sensor in the bottom. Uh, the twist is not, but it's a pretty good stick. It's It feels, I mean, it's it's not super high-end, but it, it, the price is reasonable for what it is. It is pretty accurate. I feel It feels nice to use. It has a throttle in the back um, here, but that's the only throttle, and it could be in a better position. Uh, you can see I put tape on it because I couldn't really figure out uh, a certain I needed to like figure out where stop was because like right, the center, um, and it's but it's got a lot of buttons uh, on the sides, which is great. Has a hat and four buttons on top and a nice trigger. The trigger is really good, decent stick, and I like how well it stays put. Um, it doesn't tilt really at all, and I'll still definitely use this. This is also ambidextrous, so I can have a right hand and a left hand. Right for some space combat games, that is really nice. And I look forward to trying that with this. Imagine, one hand here, the other hand here. Boom, boom, boom. Bad guys go boom. And I look forward to giving that a shot. But uh, for the single joystick flight where that's appropriate, I'm really excited to give this a try. This has so many features. It, it really is in its league of its own. And, uh, well, look forward to my final review. And I can't wait to give it to you. Take care and God bless. Thank you.